Number 69, Triple H vs Cactus Jack, Hell in a Cell for WWF Championship No Way Out 2000. The feud between Triple H and Cactus Jack was passionate, spectacular, and filled with plenty of bloodshed. The game was at his apex as WWF Champion as he defeated Cactus at the Royal 2000 Rumble. Out of desperation, Cactus Jack put his career on the line as he challenged Triple H to a rematch in Hell in a Cell at No Way Out. This was the match that Mick made his name off of when his match against The Undertaker at King the Two Rings two years earlier. At King of the Ring two years earlier. They pulled out all the stops and all of the heavy artillery in their arsenal. Cactus Jack even set his barbed wire bat on fire. This is how intense it became. Chips even gave Cactus a back body drop through the cell roof so hard that he fell through the ring. This war would come to an end as Triple H gave him the pedigree to retain the title and end his legendary hardcore career. Number 68, The Undertaker vs. The Rock vs. Kurt Angle Triple Threat Match for the WWE Undisputed Championship Vengeance 2002 This had all the ingredients for a great Triple Threat Match, and it delivered beyond expectation. This was a phenomenal. The most exciting part of the match was when they used each other's finishing moves. The Rock executed choke slam, as Angle executed rock bottom, and as the Undertaker driven Angle slam. It was like nothing I had seen since Austin vs. Rock 2. Kurt Angle slam on the Undertaker made sure that the dead man would not leave Joe Louis Arena as undisputed champion. Brahma Bull would drill the Olympic gold medalist with the rock bottom for the three count. The Rock would capture his seventh WWE Championship, leaving no questions about who the Great One really was. Number 67, Cactus Jack vs. Sting, Fall Counts Anywhere, Beach Blast 1992. Cactus Jack was a character that was a different and out of the box in WCW. He knew how to push the limits at his matches, which forced his opponents to adapt his style. Sting was the perfect dance partner as he knew how to bring out the tougher side of the brawl with great hardcore in the Fall Count Anywhere match. Sting survived the chaotic hardcore jungle and prevailed as the winner. Number 66, John Cena vs Shawn Michaels, WWE Championship WrestleMania 23. This match was Cena's biggest test as a main event star in WrestleMania because he would defend the WWE title against the very man that is, in essence, the symbol of WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels. Cena would be forced to work harder than ever before because HBK is someone that expected nothing but the best. It was clear that John would not take this opportunity lightly and he delivered. The most notable spots in this match were Sean's power driver into the steel stairs. Cena failed to connect with the AA and Michaels failed to deliver the sweet chin music at some point during the match. John applies the STFU and HPK reaches the rope. When Cena was for the AA again, Michael landed on his feet to hit him with the sweet chin music. However, Cena ducked and grabbed his legs for the STFU, which led Michael submitting. John and Cena continued to show the world, including Shawn Michaels, why he was a future star of WWE and this match. It was one of the best examples of how John Cena is truly is. 65. Harley Race vs. Ric Flair, steel cage match for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, Starcade 1983. The match signified the changing of the guard from the Race era to the Flair era, both on and off screen. The NWA entered into a more modern era by their standards. It was a grueling battle as Race targeted Flair's neck but not backed out. One of the defining images of Flair locking Race into the figure 4 as the overhead camera looked down at them on the bloody stained blue ring mat as both men were busted open. It was so exhausted that you could practically feel it just by watching. As Ric Flair celebrated the rest of the NWA locker room after the match, it was clear that Ric Flair had taken the torch and there was no looking back. The Nature Boy cemented himself as Harley Race's successor to the NWA throne. Bret Hart vs. Rowdy Brody Peters, WWF Intercontinental Championship, WrestleMania 8. By 1992, Rowdy Peters had finally won his first title in WWF E as he defeated the Mountie for the Intercontinental title. This was a lifetime achievement award for Piper because of his contributions that he made over the years. 
it was also clear that the time was ticking for a full-time competitor. Meanwhile, Bret Hart was making a name for himself as the single star. After losing to IC title to the Mountie, Bret was on the quest to take back what he believed was rightfully his. The match was one of the highlights of WrestleMania 8. The personal storytelling that they told in this match was incredible. This match was clearly the highest quality match of Piper's career, with all due respect to his other matches. Instead of the usual punches and kicks, Roddy had to go hold for hold with the best technician in the company and the world. When Bret was busted open, it seemed as if Piper was going to go into desperation mode when he had the ring bell in his hands. Instead, Roddy threw the bell away to go for a sleeper. However, the hitman ran to the turnbuckle while still in the hold. Bret pushed his foot off the turnbuckle to fall back on Piper to pin his shoulders for the three count. Bret would reclaim the IC title as he and Piper left the ring together in a sign of mutual respect. Number 63, Shawn Michaels vs. Razor Raymond, ladder match for the WWF Intercontinental Championship, SummerSlam 1995. A year earlier, Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon made history by having their first ever ladder match in WrestleMania history. Their match widely influenced the next generation of wrestlers that grew up watching them. That match raised the bar as it was one of the best matches of the night for the entire year. How our fans were looking for an encore. The Heartbreak Kid and the Bad Guy gave them the encore at the SummerSlam 1995. This match had elements that even the match at WMX did not have. This match was clearly their way of building something that they made special the year before. However, Shawn Michaels emerges as a winner to retain the IC title. HBK and Razor show signs of respect as they celebrate together after the match. Number 62, John Cena vs. CM Punk, number one contenders match, Raw, February 25th, 2013. John Cena and CM Punk have always had great chemistry in the ring, despite their animosity. After a series of four to five star classics, they knew each other like the front and back of their hands. With the opportunity to wrestle The Rock for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 29, Punk and Cena dug deep into their treasure chest of moves. Punk even pulled out a pile driver, while Cena miraculously used a Hurricane Rana. At 251 pounds, Cena did the Cena Can Rana in a great Raw match for the ages. Cena came out with the win to take on Rocky at WM 99. Number 61. Sting vs. Vader, King of the Cable Tournament Finals, Star K 1992. Out of Sting's greatest rivals outside of Ric Flair, Vader was the best. The feud ignited when Vader injured Sting by the fracturing his ribs. The second meeting took place when Vader took the WCW title from Sting. However, it was Star Kid 1992 that defined their rivalry. Sting and Vader pushed each other to the limits. As the match highlighted their strengths and weaknesses, Sting's victory over Vader in the King of Cable Tournament Finals was one of the highlights of the pre-Nitro era.